Hello. Today I want to give a, a lecture about the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy uh, EIS with a focus on the mathematical theory behind this uh, useful tool. The EIS is a very useful tool for electrochemical research in the area of the batteries, uh, fuel cells, supercapacitors, corrosion science, photoelectrochemical technologies, and much more. So first, we need to know what is the EIS. <coughs> Generally, the EIS is a measure of the difficulty for a circuit experiencing a passage of the applied alternating electric electrical signal. Electrical signal here can be either a, a, a potential or a current. For the direct, uh, direct circuit system, then E is the potential, current, and the resistance really for, uh, for, uh, follows uh, uh, Ohm's law with the R equals to uh, potential or voltage uh, over I as current. So the EIS is analogous to the almost law, but uh, it's different because the impedance in uh, alternating uh, electrical uh, signal, the impedance changes with the function, uh, it's a function of the frequency of the applied electrical signal. So generally, there are two types of the EIS experiments. Uh, the first one, we can name it, name it as the potential static EIS. The applied signal is the potential and the measured result is current. This type of the EIS is the most common case and generally used. So this talk, this, uh, this lecture will be based on the potential static EIS. Another type of the EIS is uh, a galvanostatic, a a galvanostatic uh, a static uh, EIS. The applied signal is current and the measured result is potential. <clears throat> when we apply a alternating uh, potential to an electrochemical system with a wave function, cosine and wave function, as et uh, equals to e naught uh, cosine omega t. So the e here uh, refers to the potential applied to the electrode, alternating electrode. E naught is a potential sine wave amplitude. The amplitude here usually is a very small value, usually uh, the between 5 to 10 millivolts, because only with a small uh, signal, small amplitude of the uh, potential, and the E and I can approximately uh, follow the linear relationship. Omega here is the angular, uh, angular uh, frequency applied. Pi, uh, T is the time. The term omega T here represents the phase of the waveform. So on this slide, I put a figure here, and the blue line here is the alternating potential applied, ET. The orange line is the resulting, uh, the corresponding, <coughs> the corresponding uh, current response. Uh, with the same uh, frequency as the applied potential, but with uh, the frequency the same, but the, uh, with the phase change, phase angle change. This phase angle change can be expressed with uh, phi. So with uh, the corresponding uh, current upon applying the alternating uh, potential can be expressed as I naught cosine omega t minus phi. 
So I not here is a current sine, uh, sine wave amplitude. Omega is angular fre uh, frequency, t is the time. Omega t here also represents the phase of the waveform. A phi is a phase angle shift uh, as, as I uh, talked about just now here. The purpose of ES is to obtain the information of the uh, impedance based on the applied potential and the resulting current. Uh, the process needs some mathematic uh, transform mm, <clears throat> uh, with the help of the Euler formula. Euler formula uh, is uh, gen generally correlates the complex exponential function with the uh, trigonometric uh, function uh, with the formula as shown uh, here. E powers to Gx equals two cosine x plus J sine x. J here is the <coughs> imaginary unit because we, we have already used I it's the letter I to represent the current. So we use the uh, letter J to, to rep, uh, represent the imaginary unit. E here is uh, a natural constant. Uh, yeah, natural constant. Natural constant. Uh, J is the uh, imaginary unit. If we substitute, uh, substitute x with an angle uh, as we apply it uh, as a, uh, with a, 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 the potential uh, with the form of the omega t plus phi, and then the Euler formula can be expressed with this equation. In this equation, we also multiply each term uh, in this equation with a constant amplitude B. A is a real uh, component, real number. So then uh, the Euler equation can be expressed this way. A cosine omega t plus phi equals to A times E powers to J omega t plus phi minus uh, J A sine omega t A plus phi. Uh, the left hand side of this equation is a real uh, component. There is no imaginary uh, term uh, on the left hand side. For the right, right hand side, it's a com complex component, include both the real number and the imaginary uh, quality. So now next step, we need to take the real portion of uh, real, real portion of the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation. So if we equate the real portions of both sides, we can obtain this equation. The RE here uh, represents the real portion of a number, just a, a a real portion uh, operator. So Re A cosine omega t plus phi equals to Re uh, A A E powers two uh, omega t plus phi minus J A sine omega t plus phi. The left hand side of this equation is a real number. So the um, real operator can be removed because the real number is a real number. We don't need to the real operator there. The second term of the right hand set, this term is an entirely imaginary component. So if we take the real portion of the uh, right hand set, this term can be removed. 
And then the equation, Euler equation can be simplified by, uh, as this. A cosine omega t plus y equals to real portion of the a e powers to j omega t plus y equals to a uh, real portion of a e, e, e uh, powers to j omega t and times e powers to j phi. If we use a set uh, a e j phi here with an x. And then the Euler equation can be further uh, simplified with this. A cosine omega t plus phi equals to real portion of x e j omega t. x is and this a e powers to g phi. Mm. Now let's go back to the wave function of the alternating uh, signal we applied to the electrode as uh, I introduced at the beginning on the third, uh, th uh, third slide of uh, this lecture. First slide, you, uh, you can go back to uh, look at the, that page. Um, so the potential we applied to the circuit is uh, Et equals to E naught cosine omega T. And according to the equation we obtained here, and it's uh, Et can be written as a real portion of E bar times E powers to J omega T. E bar here. Uh, is equal to E naught because there is no imaginary uh, component uh, for uh, the potential of light. The corresponding current, uh, resulting current, uh, upon applying the alternating uh, potential, the IP is uh, uh, equals to uh, I naught cosine omega t minus phi and can be also expressed as with the real portion of the i bar e powers j omega t. The i bar here equals to the i naught e powers to minus j phi, and also based on the equation uh, here. <laughs> Now uh, we can apply an uh, analogous uh, <clears throat> treatment for the uh, by following the Ohm's law. The z we use the z as the impedance. Z uh, equals to e t and i t. So z equals to e t uh, over i t, and uh, based on the information we obtained here, e t i t it can be expressed this way, and uh, e t over i t, uh, and the, this term is uh, cancelled out, and then e t over i t equals to E bar over I bar, and can also be expressed as E naught over I naught times E powers to J phi. <clears throat> if we set the E naught and uh, E naught over I naught can be set simply as the impedance magnitude. Uh, we can use the absolute number of the z impedance <coughs> to represent the uh, impedance uh, magnitude, and then the the, the 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 impedance can be expressed as z equals to absolute z e, e powers to j phi. 
then we can uh, uh, apply the Euler's formula again in, in backwards. And E J phi equals to uh, cosine phi plus J sine phi. And then Z equals to uh, magnitude impedance times uh, cosine phi plus J sine phi. And can also be simplified as uh, ZR uh, plus J as uh, ZI. ZR is the real part, real part of the impedance. ZI is the imaginary part of the impedance. This uh, equation, this formula is very important uh, for the EIS. Mm, the ZR uh, is a real component, can be calculated with uh, uh, the uh, uh, absolute Z and the phase angle. The imaginary component, the imaginary part of the impedance, the I can, or can be expressed as uh, magnitude uh, impedance times sine phi. During uh, an experiment, we usually set the E naught, the amplitude of the applied alternating potential. This value is usually less than 10 millivolts, 10 millivolts. And we also need to set the fre frequency range, F. F is the frequency. And then the commercial software can perform Fourier transform uh, at each fr frequency to extract the impedance uh, magnitude and the phase angle phi. Based on the impedance magnitude and the angle phi and the, the, the real part and the imaginary part of the impedance can be calculated. Okay, uh, this lecture only focuses on the mathematics, uh, ma mathematical theory of the EIS. So in the future, I'm going to talk about the uh, more about the, uh, the also uh, uh, more uh, about the theory of the EIS and the equivalent circuit, and then how to apply the EIS for the research of the real electrochemical systems. Okay, uh, this lecture, uh, we can stop this lecture for now.